What's up? Don't worry, I'm not going to talk very long. I just wanted to intro this with this video is an extended lesson and it is taken from a live stream I did. Many of you came, there were a couple hundred people on the live stream. It was open to the public. It's all about using the paradiddle in a very uh, basic way and then building from there. But what I want you to take away from this is the systems that I use. A lot of people say, Stephen, what's the difference with your lessons and everything else? I teach systems that you can use across uh, across fields. No matter what you're learning, you can use these systems. So in here, I talk about chunking and I talk about assembly lines and I talk about zoning. I talk about them in a big way. If you want the sheet music for this lesson, I would suggest you download it. It's in the video description as well as I'm going to uh, pin a comment so that you can see that you can go snag the sheet music and then watch this lesson. I got a great, uh, a lot of great feedback on it. Seems it helped a lot of you. So I wanted to post it here. I had just forgotten about it. I meant to do it earlier. Go through the lessons. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me. Leave me a comment. Let me know you stopped by. Go watch the lesson. Um, we're going to be talking about the paradiddle and how we can apply that. Now here's the deal. One of the biggest things that I see in practice time uh, for other players and for myself, to be honest, I have a ton of things in my practice time that I can do, but I haven't moved them to my gig bag yet. I have what's called my gig, my gig bag and my practice bag, and they're over here in my practice bag, and I'm trying to move things over as much as I can so that I can use them in, in a realistic way. All right, so whenever they're in your practice bag and you can't really use them, but if somebody says, hey, can you play fill in the blank, a paradiddle for instance, and you can be like, yeah, I can play a paradiddle, and you play a paradiddle for them. But can you play it in time, on a gig, in reaction to something? Can you use it to create? See, what happens is we half learn material because we get this pressure that we need to move on to other material, and so we leave things half learned. Whenever you've half learned something, it's, it's of no use. You've spent all that time in your practice time learning something new and then right at the finish line we stop and we go to another race right and so we never take it and actually implement it into our playing into how we're going to into how we can uh, use it in our playing all of those things and so that's what I want to work on with you today and I'm going to give you some tools this isn't just like oh here's a couple cool licks this is like a system that I've developed that you can use in your practice time for the paradiddle for other rudiments uh, and it incorporates three different things and I'll kind of break them out so you can understand what they are um, one of them is chunking one of them is assembly lines and one of them is zoning and if we use those things in our practice time, it organizes this stuff, and by the time you get done with whatever you're working on, you're able to apply it all around the drum set as if it were the same as any of the other things that you've learned on the drum set. That's what we're going to be doing. So check out the sheet music, uh, and that's what we'll be working from. And what you know, the cool thing here is, is these seem like very simple patterns: right, left, right, right. That's a very simple pattern: two singles and a double, right? Or the the bottom triplet that I'm referring to there. Those are going to be our chunks that we're working with in this lesson that we're going to use. They're going to kind of be the vehicle that we use to get to where we want to go. All right, so let's check this out. Now, if you'll look at this sheet music, um, what is happening here is I have a couple things at the top, and those are going to be what I call chunks, okay? Instead of calling them stickings, we're going to be dealing with chunks in this, okay? The chunks are going to be three separate chunks. The first chunk is a simple paradiddle. All right, now, even if you're a beginner, you can understand a paradiddle. A paradiddle is right, left, so two singles, right, right. And then that sticking does what it called, what I call turn itself around. It's a hand-to-hand it's -hand rudiment. So the next time you play it, it starts on the other hand. So it's right, left, right, right. And then the next one has left, right, left, left. All right, and that is going to be the the uh, the basic sticking for this. All right, that's a paradiddle. That's going to be our basic sticking. That's chunk number one, all right? Now, we move on to the second chunk. The second chunk is what it, we would call bottom trips, okay? It's not a triplet. We're not going to use it in that format, but it's three notes. And so it's going to be right, left, kick.
Okay, those are two simple chunks, right? If you're a beginner, intermediate, advanced, you can use those. It's not the complexity of the sticking, it's how we apply it. All right, so our first chunk is paradiddles. Our second chunk is a bottom type style triplet, right? All right, now, you'll notice that Bonham will play that with the kick first or with the left hand first. It's not how it's laid out. That's just kind of how we refer to them. Um, what's going on, Jason? What's up, Glenn? Um, what's up, Rush? So um, we're going to take those two chunks and combine it with this third chunk. And the third chunk is just two singles, right, left. And right now you're thinking like, this is way too simple, but it's not the complexity of the sticking, it's how we work it through our practice time. All right, so we have chunk one is paradiddle, chunk two is bottom triplets, chunk three is going to be right left. That's it, all right? A four note sticking, a three note sticking, and a two note sticking. Or if we're referring to them in chunks, a four note chunk, a three note chunk, and a two note chunk. I'll play them one more time. Okay, now let's take those and we're going to figure out, so let's say, um, let's say uh, uh, we're going to use these in 16th notes. Now 16th notes in a bar 4-4 four, four time, 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a. And somebody says the bottom triplet starts with the left hand. I can pull up video where Bonham is playing it with his right hand start. I can pull up video where he's starting with his kick drum right left and I can pull up video where he's starting with his kick left right. So bottom triplets are simply right left kick, left right kick. He may have preferred one or the other, but I can show you all of examples of him playing all of those in different ways. So uh, now let's go to 16th notes. That means we have 16 notes per measure, four 16th notes per quarter note. And we count those one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Now if we have that to deal with and we have our three chunks, how many chunks of four and chunks of three and chunks of two does it take to make 16 notes? Well, I know that four plus four equals eight. Okay, well, that's half of it. And then I say, okay, three plus three equals six. So I use four notes uh, chunk twice and the three note chunk twice and the one note chunk twice, and we have 16 notes. So look at number one, and that's all we've done. It's right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, kick, right, left, kick, right, left. So the first step in our assembly line, and some of you are like, whoa, 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 hold on, you just pulled out a word I don't know, assembly line. An assembly line is something that we use in our practice time to move material, material in an ordered way. It's, it's, it's an organized fashion for, for working through this material. Okay, so step one of the assembly line, we have our chunk and we're going to, just like you're on assembly line and you're building like a Ford, you know, pickup truck. Step one would be, we got to put the wheels on the truck. So step one is going to be learn the sticking on the snare drum. That's our first stop in our assembly line. Okay, so I would learn that without a click at first. Oftentimes we try to add the click and that kind of confounds things. Learn it without the click first. Once you get it smoothed down, then we're going to put it with the click. So let's say I've been working on this a little bit and I, I, I kind of got it under my hands. I'm going to put eighth notes on the click here. And we're going to play this. Now look, I need to stress something. The, in, the important thing is not that we're working with paradiddles or bottom triplets or whatever it is. The important thing is the system that I'm teaching you, okay? So if you will memorize the system and write it down, chunking, use them through assembly lines, and then we're going to get into zoning, you're going to be able to use this system with any other sticking you have, all right? So I'm just using that as a vehicle to work through the paradiddle. So let's do this to 55 BPM. One and a two e and a three, four. Now that's not super interesting doing that, right? It's kind of plain Jane. But 
it's our first step in learning this thing. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, so the next step is going to be operating in a, what I call a zonal pattern. Zones are simply, and this isn't my original idea, other teachers have used zones before in different ways. Gary Chester talks about zones in his phenomenal book, uh, The New Breed. He, he divides the kit up into two pieces, but it's still a zoning type of a method. A zone is simply an established portion of your kit. All right, so listen to this. My zones are going to be simple. We're going to have five of them. Zone one is the floor tom and the snare drum. Zone two is the snare drum and the high tom. Zone three is the floor tom and the high tom. Zone four is the, the hi-hat and the snare drum. Zone five is the ride cymbal and the snare drum. Okay, so zone one. Zone two. Zone three. Zone four. Zone five. Okay, now we've got our structure. We have our chunks, paradiddles, bottom triplets, and the two, note, the, the two note chunk, the singles. Then we have our assembly line, and now we have zones. So let's take the first stop was learn the sticking on the snare drum. We got that down. The second stop is move the right hand into zone one and learn the sticking there. Now what this is going to do is it's going to methodically move the paradiddle or the sticking around the drum kit so we expand our box. We were locked in here, like I can only play the periodical here, right? It's like we're playing. Right? We're locked in here. What we want to do is break out of that box and expand our box. And once we go to zone one, our box will be here. Once we go to zone two, our box will be like a triangle. Zone three, we expand that even more. Zone four, it's all over here. Zone five, we're on the whole kit. The zoning is not important as to like you do the same zones as me. Simply divide your kit up into zones, specify that those are the zones you're going to work through, and then go through it in an orderly way. All right, so let's take our chunk. Our first stop was learn the sticking. That's exercise number one. Second stop is going to be move it to zone one. So I would then put the click on, and I would simply play that sticking in zone one. Two. Now we're not at the point where we're going to start applying this yet. We need to work it through our system first. So if you think the second step is go to zone one, what's the third step? We have five zones. We're going to go to all of them. It's a hint. We're going to go to zone two. So on our assembly line, we have our chunks, and we move them to the first stop. That's learning the sticking on the snare. Second stop is zone one. Third stop is zone two. Now, the cool thing about this assembly line is you can now take something like the flam accent or Swiss Army triplets and move it to zone one and learn those. Move it to zone, uh, excuse me, learn it in that first stop. Move it to zone one. Move it to zone two. Do you see how the system doesn't change? The chunks change. All right, so let's get back to this. We're going to move it to zone two. One and a two, three, four. So let's go ahead and snag zone three. So first stop is the snare drum, learn it there. Second stop is zone one. Third stop is zone two. Fourth stop, excuse, fourth stop, we're going to zone three. What do you think the next stop on our assembly line is going to be? I know it's getting really hard because I'm inconsistent, right? It's going to be zone four. Zone five. OK, 
Okay? So that's what's going to be happening here whenever we're working through this. All right? Now, let's go ahead and I'm going to I'm going to show you an example of what this looks like. If I I'm going to give you an overhead shot here. If I go to all of the different zones and I'm going to bump this up to let's say we've already learned this. I'm going to bump it up to 100 BPM just to show you kind of like a real life what this would look like. I'm going to go through all the zones. I'm going to play it through two times in each zone. Three, four. Some of you are like, whoa, that was really, that was, that was a fast run through. I just want to give you an overview of where we're going with this thing and what that looks like once you learn it, okay? So once we learn that, that's how we do it. And you're like, Stephen, that's still not, it's still not very interesting. I agree with you, okay? But the next step in your assembly line after we've gone through all of the zones is I want you to use it as a drum fill. So I would play a bar of time or three bars of time, whichever you'd like to do, and then we're going to put one as a drum fill. So my first drum fill, I'd say, okay, I'm going to play it in zone one. One, two, three, four. Then to zone two. Okay, so it starts getting a, to be a lot of fun whenever you, whenever you start moving it around a little bit. And that's kind of what I want to get to. Now, let's go to the next thing. We haven't even added accents to this thing. So we haven't added articulation to this, and that's a very important thing to add to this. So let's add articulation. Articulation is the temperature of a specific note. Dynamics are the, the temperature of the entire room. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and look at the articulation. I'm going to accent the downbeat of every paradiddle. I'm going to accent the downbeat of every Bonham triplet. So every time I start it, I'm going to accent it. And I'm going to accent the first note of that two note single. So now the drum fill or the pattern we've got is going to be the chunks. If we're looking at them, it's four, four, three, three, two. That's the order of our chunks, okay? Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to play it like this. Somebody's got a good question. What if I play open-handed with standard setup player ride with left hand? Reverse the stickings for some of this. So it's not important that your right hand be on the ride symbol. It's simply if this, if you lead with this hand, you can <coughs> rearrange that how you would like to. It's not hard and fast rules, especially if you have a different setup. Adjust the exercises to your setup. Okay, now that we have that, now we can kind of start like building out some articulation with this, this drum fill, and it starts sounding a lot better. So if I'm playing. sounds a lot better than right now what if we put it on the toms okay so now that we've added the articulation our assembly line starts over we add the articulation and we learn it on the snare drum the next step on our assembly line is what? We take it to zone one with the articulation. What do you think the next step is? Zone two, zone three, zone four, zone five. You see how methodical that is? 
Okay? That's what I want to get through to you. Not like, hey, use the paradiddle in your play. I mean, that's cool too, right? But what's better is we now have a system that can stay the same and we just change the stickings that go into it to be able to work them around. And what that's going to do is that's going to give us full facility. <laughs> I stayed within my five zones. I used bottom triplets, double, or, or the two single notes, and paradiddles for the mo most part. And it was all within the zones. It gives us the palette to create, okay? Everybody has the same colors. It's how we use them, and this is a system that will help that. All right, so let's check this out. So let's take this next one, and it would go through the zones. Let me take it through the zones. Uh, I'll go at 80 BPM. And I know this is a little bit quicker, but just kind of get the big picture of what's going on here. So I'm going to take it twice through each of the zones at 80 BPM. Number two. So that's the next step of my assembly line. Okay, that's cool. We've learned one drum fill pretty much, right? Then what's the next thing? I would take it and I would put it with drum grooves, okay? Let's go to number three. What does number three do? The cool thing is, is I've got this system and I've got these chunks and I've got 16 notes. That's what we're dealing with. So the hip thing is now, as long as I have two three note stickings, two four note stickings, and one two note sticking, I have 16 notes so I can rearrange them like Legos, okay? So now instead of having four, four, three, three, two, which is the order that it was paradiddle, paradiddle, bottom triplet, bottom triplet, two note sticking. Now we can have, let's look at number three, bottom triplet, bottom triplet, two note sticking, paradiddle, paradiddle. Now we have three, three, two, four, four, if we're referring in chunks. I know I'm using a lot of terms that you may not be used to. You may need to, um, I, I may try to record this and post it later. I'll, I'll see if I can. But if I can, uh, then, then you, you can use this um, to, to kind of go back over this stuff. But take some notes and write down these ideas of chunking assembly lines and zoning on the drum kit. I guarantee you they're going to help you in other areas, okay? Uh, so let's look at number three. Now we had a drum fill that sounded like this. And now it sounds like this. playing a groove. So you can see how we're starting, oh wow, so when I start moving those, now I can actually create. And we have a system that allows you to go through and do this creation. But it's all about giving you the tools to, to stop the half learning in your practice time. Like, oh yeah, I can play a paradiddle. Can you really play a paradiddle? Like if I ask you to come up with a groove, can you sit there and go, okay, cool, got this, can put these accents there, work it through the system, and by the end of it, I have this cool groove, fill, pattern to use in your solos, whatever that may be. That's what I want to get to you. So let's go to number four. Let's rearrange the pieces again. Let's split the threes. So now we, we did have three, three, two, four, four. So bottom triplet, bottom triplet, two notes, paradiddle, paradiddle. Now we still, we still got, just reorder them. Let's do a three, four, four, three, two. 
And then it starts sounding kind of cool because the paired it will start coming on the uhs and the es. So it sounds like this. to use it in soloing and all kinds of different things. Now, what do you think we're going to do now that we've re every time we rearrange it, what are we going to go back to doing? We're going to go back to the zones, back to the assembly line. Let me see if we got any questions here. Uh, uh, Jarko has one. Um, let's see here. Do you always use the zone system while playing and practicing? So I always teach with assembly lines, with zoning is a big part of my practice time. And so if I'm trying to learn something new and I'm trying to, instead of like having endless options, it helps me to have zones where I'm like, okay, I'm going to go here first. Okay, I'm going to go here next and then here. So it's an organized system in my practice. I like practice time to be very, very organized so that I can create letter, later. See, creation, being able to create, that creative spark comes from an organized, repetitive method that you ingrain in that muscle memory. Uh, Paul's got a question. Uh, is this bottom three note triplet sticking triplets or three note sixteenths? Can you clarify this, please? Thanks. Um, yeah, Paul, great question. They're just referred to as, I, I said that at the beginning, you may have missed it. They're just referred to as bottom triplets because they come in threes, but we're using them in sixteenth notes. Yeah, sorry. I, I almost didn't put that in there, but it's, it's what everybody knows that sticking really by. is You can start it with your left hand, too. You can start it with your kick drum. You can start it with, you know, whatever it is. Uh, but those three notes, that right-left kick. See, that's the that's this thing. Any sticking, no matter its inversion, is that same sticking. So kick right-left is still right-left kick. We just move the kick drum to the front. Okay, right kick left is still right left kick. We just move the kick to the middle, right? It just has to do with where you start on the pattern. But no, these aren't triplets. We're using them as 16th notes. All right, so let's check this out. Let's go, um, now that I've got that, you're like, okay, cool, that's, Stephen, cool, you taught me how to like use that around. Now, what if I wanted to use this with grooves? Well, I would take this and I would go to zone. I, I would take this um, to zone, let's go to zone four, right? And the groove typically happens on the, um, for those of you that wear in-ears, take care of your ears. I'm having trouble with one of my ears, like sores, not hearing. <laughs> but I wear in-ears so much and earplugs so much that like it started getting aggravated and I need like time off <laughs> for my ear to stop bleeding. That's disgusting, isn't it? By the, on the way home from a gig the other night, I wound up seeing a, a wreck, like, I pulled up on it, like, right as it had happened. Like, cars flipped, and, like, two in the morning. It was horrible. It was, it was awful. We were, like, pulling guys on the back of trucks. Be careful if you're gigging late at night. There's lots of craziness that happens on the road. And that's not the first time I've run across a really bad wreck coming home from a gig. So, anyway, be, I don't know why. That, the blood, there we go. That's what made me think of it. It wasn't a good way to end my evening after the gig. It was a really good gig, though. Uh, so, let's go to number five. And what we're going to do is we're simply going to play... Four, four, three, three, two. Okay, now let's add a backbeat to that because the way the stickings lie, I can put a backbeat in there. And that's, to me, that's really cool. Like anytime I can put a backbeat in something I'm doing and make it an official like two and four groove and use that in a pop setting, we could throw the backbeat off on a different beat, but that's always fun to me to put it in there whenever we can actually just put it on two and four. So let's do that. And that's going to be exercise number five. We're going to put an accent on two and an accent on four.
Now, to complete the groove, I'm going to just put a kick drum on the downbeat of one. So now we have a groove. To me, that's fun. We're playing on the ride symbol. But grooves, whenever we're doing this, um, somebody's asking about in ears. Am I using in ear monitors or am I using? Um, uh, earplugs, like ear protection. Um, I'm using in-ear monitors. These are all clear in-ear monitors. Love the company. Really good people. Um, if you ever want to uh, look at them, give me an email, and I actually send people to my rep directly. Not because I like get a discount or kickback. Or, I don't make anything off of that. I just, when I signed with them, I was like, hey, you have to take care of my students. And so you can actually speak to them, and even if you never buy anything, they'll do everything they can to educate you on ear protection, in-ear monitors, that kind of a thing. So that's the relationship I have with them. But these are in-ear monitors, and yes, they do also protect the ear. They seal the ear if you get them made right. So they, they serve as ear protection and as in-ear monitors. Um, okay, so now that we have that, I mean, that's interesting, but it's not like, it's not like David Garibaldi type of an interesting. The beautiful thing about him was he had this, this idea, or, or has this idea, like he's dead, he's not dead. Um, he has this idea of a three layer of sound. So we have the really loud, the super soft, and then in the in between, okay? And so what we need to do is we need to carve out where that's gonna be. So my really soft notes are gonna be my ghost notes. My medium notes are gonna be my kick drum, and my really loud notes are gonna be my accents. So I'm gonna add another accent on the downbeat of the paradiddle and on the last note of that first paradiddle. So now that first paradiddle is going to sound like this. On beat two, I'm going to add an accent. We've already got one on the downbeat, but I'm going to add another one on that hi-hat. Then on beat three, I'm going to add an accent on the first of that bottom triplet, so an accent on the first of the next one. Keep the accent on the downbeat and add an accent on the upbeat of four. Now, I know that was a lot, so let me play that very slowly for you. Four E and a one E and a two. Up to speed for him. Now let's add a kick drum on the downbeat of one and the uh of one to make this a little bit funkier so it'll go with those accents on the hi hat. Three, four, oh. I almost dropped that stick. The last live stream I did for solo, or a couple live streams ago, I did for soloing, like for the public live stream, I dropped sticks like it was bad. It was <laughs> like I had just started playing the drums. Ridiculous. It was ridiculous. All right, so let's let's uh, play this actually without dropping the sticks. Four, eight, three, and up. What happens if we take the accents over here?
of a sudden, literally all we've done is worked this stuff through very methodical step one in the assembly line, step two, step three, step four. Now, what you saw me start doing was I started rearranging those pieces. And that's something I talk more about in the extended course for this is you start rearranging those pieces and using those as fodder for drum fills. So instead of coming up with like something completely different, I can fill within the groove. So if I'm here. The cool thing about that is, is we now have a system to use the paradiddle to create with, and it's no longer, we're no longer sitting around wondering, what do I do? How do I work through this? How do I, all of those things. We have a system with the chunking, with assembly lines, with zoning, that we can now take this stuff and work it through our practice time, okay? Because see, we haven't even looked at what we can do if we take this to sextuplets. If we go to sextuplets, we have 16 notes, right, with 16th notes. If we go to sextuplets, that adds how many more notes? It's like six times four, it's, it's all the higher math, right? It adds eight more notes. Okay, cool. Well, if I put two more paradiddles in there, then now I can play this pattern in sextuplets. We can rearrange them. So we have this, this whole thing, this whole structure that we can begin to look through and use to create. And we don't just have to stay with 16th notes. I'm just staying with 16th notes because that's kind of how uh, it was easier to break it out that way and to, uh, to kind of um, piece it off for you. So take this and don't just, um, don't just, don't just use this in a, um, in the ways that I show you, use it in as many different ways as you can come up with. Like, don't just do what Steven does. That's the boring thing. Do what you do. Take this stuff, take these systems, and put them into your own playing, and then you can begin to move them around and do what you do with them. Um, and, and again, this is to help you eliminate that, that whole half-learning issue. Okay, and the half learning issue is we learn something. I've got so many things that I learned way back in the day and I never learned to apply them in my playing. So there's this big gap between what I'm able to do in my practice time and what I'm able to actually do practically on a gig. And that's, that's a, there's a big, there's a big gap in between some of those things. And I talk to a lot of students and that's, they're like, yeah, I know that's sticking. I know that's sticking. I know the parrot. Well, can you use it? And then they go to use it, and they can't use it. And that's, you know, to me as a teacher, that I want to help you get over that hump. So the enemy here is half learning. And if we get some tools, it'll help us to, you know, tools like zoning, assembly lines, um, uh, 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 chunking, all of those different things. We can use those in our practice time to really move ourselves forward. Before we get out of here, 
I did want to just say one thing about how we can apply this. So I keep saying, like, you can use these assembly lines to work through other things. Let's, let, let me do that real quick just so you can see. Just like I want to give you as much value as I can in this. I know you've got, like, you, well, a lot of you probably took your lunch break and stuff. Let's use another thing. Let's say I've got, um, let's go back to a Swiss Army triplet, okay? A Swiss Army triplet is this, and you don't have to necessarily learn a Swiss Army triplet right now. This is the sticking, though. Flam, a right-handed flam, a right, and a left. So it's a three-note sticking. Well, if I go through my assembly line, the first thing is going to be like learn it on the snare drum. So let me do that in sixteenth notes. If it was like one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a okay, that's going to be that's going to be. Um, the first step. Now the second step would be move it to zone one. Um, Jeremy says too many questions, none that are relevant. Jeremy, ask the irrelevant questions. If you have something on another topic that you want to discuss, ask away. Uh, this is just kind of the portion of a live stream where I can hang out and discuss. And if you have questions like, hey, my hand technique or bass drum or whatever that is, I'll answer all of those questions, whatever they are, whatever they're about. Um, now let's move it to zone one. That's kind of cool. We could also just move the first note to zone one. Or we could move the left hand to zone two. The next step in my assembly line, zone three. The next step, zone four. zone five. Now, I now have facility with the Swiss Army triplet in all of those different areas. So I would take it and add it to a drum fill. You can also use it with sex templates. If I was doing some type of a solo. I'm just messing around with it now. But by going through that methodical assembly line, we now have a system to go, okay, step one, learn it on the snare drum. Step two, learn it in zone one. Step three, zone it in zone two. Step, uh, you know, four, learn it in zone three. Step five, zone four. Step, bam, 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 bam. And what that does is it eliminates in our practice time that whole emotional thing of like, oh my gosh, okay, well, I know this. Now what do I do? I guess I could play it on the, and you sit there, and by then you get distracted, and you go away, and you half learn the material. It takes the tools that, that, that I'm, I'm teaching right now, those organizational strategies, to go, no, the next step is I do this. The next step is I do this. The next step, this, 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 this. Uh, and that's what we want to get our, our practice time down to, is that very systematic thing. Um, a couple of questions. Hey, could you explain the, sect the sextuplets again? Thank you. Um, from Doc Drum. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So sextuplets, 16th notes are four notes per quarter note. 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a. Sextuplets are six notes per, per quarter note. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 4, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, and 2, and za ba 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 da ba Okay? So playing that, if I had 16th notes, That's 16th notes. Sextuplets would be six notes. Now, if we take that and realize that six times four, because we have four beats in the measure and six notes per beat, 
we have 24 notes to deal with. And so now, if we take those stickings, it's just a matter of what combination of four note stickings, three note stickings, and two note stickings equals 24 notes. And so one of those combinations is the paradiddle four times, the three note sticking two times, and the two note sticking one time. Okay? So we could play this. So it's all a math game from then on. And I actually take, like, I take pages and I just write them out. And I'm like, oh, what if I did? But see, now you can refer to it in sextuplets, four, 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 three, three, two. And I know as long as I have four fours, two threes, and one two, I have 24 sextuplet notes in a measure of four, four. Does that make sense? Uh, hopefully that clears it up a little bit. Uh, when mixing those different pieces of, this is from Cine. I think I'm saying your name right. I hope I'm saying your name right. Apologies if I'm not. When mixing those different pieces of 432 and, for example, soloing or longer fills, what is your advice to keep on track where you're going? I guess it's impossible to count while playing when the pieces were 16 in total. So the cool thing is, is allowing yourself to count in this way. So I know that two fours and two threes and one two equals 16 notes. So if I start on the upbeat of one, I'm going to come out on the upbeat of one. And if I play those in order. Or, so I start to, the more you learn these, you'll start going, like, if I play four group, you know, four fours, four threes, and two twos, I'm going to play two bars of time. And so what I do is I obviously count in my head, one, two, and I'll start going, okay, I'm going to add some space, and then I'm going to start on the upbeat of three. So I might play it something like this. So I start going through there at slow tempos and coming up with like, okay, I'm going to play four, four, three, three, two. But I'm just going to put some space in between those, and I would just start trying to count. And even doing it in the same way, so I count out loud. One, two, three, four. So it takes going through those real methodical. Something else I would do, Cindy, is I would actually start them like, okay, I'm going to start my drum fill on the and of one. So I might be playing a groove like this. started on two. So in your assembly line, you can build in the next portion of your assembly line might be like, okay, I'm going to start that same drum fill in that same layout, but I'm going to start it on the and of one, the and of two, and of three, and of four. And what it is is it's just methodic. Assembly lines can be as long as you want them to, and they don't just have to have, to have zones. You can go, I'm going to take this one drum fill, and the next spot of my assembly line is I'm going to start it on every 16th note of that. So it just takes working with those and kind of experimenting with them. To me, that's the, the, the fun part.